The new 7-star raid has come in the form of Poison Terra Swampert. So as always, let's talk about it. Poison Terra is definitely a choice for this raid, I'm not sure that I'd have gone with, considering that Swampert only has one decent poison type move and it didn't even bring it. And it definitely feels like this raid was set up like that just for the sake of the type advantages, which we'll get to that later down the road in this video. But as per usual, let's start with the ability and the moves. First and foremost, Swampert's hidden ability is Damp, which means it's immune to moves like Self-Destruct, Explosion, and the like. Which is fine, because I really, really hope people aren't bringing those moves to a Terror Raid in the first place. So let's move on. First up, Swampert's Common Rocket Earthquake, a strong physical ground move in the first of its stab attacks, and quite possibly the strongest move in its arsenal. Next up, it comes Rockin' Hydro Pump, which, considering Swampert is a physical attacker and this is a special attack, you probably don't have to worry about all that much. Especially not with that accuracy. Moving into Swampert's poison attack of choice, Sludge Wave, which, once again, not the strongest move in that slot, or the most effective at poisoning things. If you couldn't tell, I was fully expecting Poison Jab, and I'm kinda disappointed they didn't. Rounding out the last of its actual usable moves, it also has Liquidation, which, quite frankly, considering this is the better move in slot, I'm surprised they even bothered with Hydro Pump. As for the moves, it only uses a scripted action. Swampert's also coming along with Muddy Water. Another special attacking water move, but it's not really here for damage. It's here more for the chance to lower your accuracy. And last but not least, it also is coming with Yawn, which means it has a way to put you to sleep, but it's only going to use this once and only target a single Pokemon. So it's nowhere near as bad as Pre-Marina with Sing. With that out of the way, let's get to the scripted actions. Swampert immediately starts the raid by using Muddy Water, hitting all of your teammates all at once and potentially lowering their accuracy by one stage. And with 90% of the timer remaining, it'll lower your Terra Gauge. And then with 85% remaining HP, it'll raise its shield. It can also do this with 50% remaining timer, but unless you're running a severe build-up build, you should probably have triggered the HP one first. Swampert will also reset your stat buffs at 80% timer remaining, and its own at 75% remaining HP. With 60% of the timer remaining, it will also use Yawn on one member of your team. And at 40% remaining HP, it'll hit you with Muddy Water a second time. And that's all this Swampert does, so let's talk tactics. Now, earlier I mentioned Swampert's typing, so I'll go into that a little more at length here. Considering Swampert only has one poison move, and it's not even really the best in slot for this, you could be easily forgiven for wondering why they would pick Poison Terror for this raid. Now, the obvious answer here is the two types that are immune to poison completely, Steel and Poison respectively, are both weak to ground type. So Swampert being a ground type that's coming with Earthquake makes it a little bit of a problem for those two. Continuing to look at it from a defensive point of view, both ground and water types are resisted by grass, but grass is weak to poison. And ground types, which not only resist poison, but are super effective against it, are weak to water, which means Terra Poison Swampert actually covers all of its weaknesses and resistances very well. Now, does that make this a difficult raid? No, not especially. Though you really shouldn't underestimate it, it is still a seven star raid after all. Because of all that, the most effective typing here is Psychic is not only is it super effective against poison type, but it's not weak to any of the moves in Swampert's arsenal. However, as I did mention earlier, Earthquake is one of Swampert's strongest moves, so something that resists ground is also very much appreciated. So any Pokemon with Levitate, or maybe even a flying psychic type, is very useful here. Swampert also has a weird mix of both special and physical attacks, and it will flip back and forth between the two depending on which defense stat your Pokemon has at its highest at the time. So if you're boosting your special defense, be prepared for it to switch to physical attacks part way in. I'd also like to point out this is one of those seven star raids where they didn't bother to give it a move that boosts any of its stats. So you don't have to worry about it boosting its attack power over the course of the raid. However, that being said, its attack power and even its special attack is pretty high to start with. And if it starts hitting you with liquidation, it might start lowering your defense as well. However, I can honestly say, through all of my attempts at this raid, it never once used Liquidation or Hydro Pump. So you might not have to worry about that. Yawn is also potentially an issue, as it might put your Pokémon to sleep. However, it's only going to do it to one member of your team, and only once over the course of the whole raid. So realistically, just a heal cheer is enough to wake you up and keep you going. The only other potential concern is Muddy Water, since that move does have a 30% chance of lowering your accuracy which means up front, your moves might not be connecting as much as you'd like. So once again, that's only a 30% chance, and that's if it hits, because Muddy Water only has an 85 accuracy. So it's a 30% chance on a move that has a lower chance to hit you. So chances are you're not getting your accuracy lowered, and you probably don't have to worry about it. 
Also, considering it resets your stats at 80% timer, so long as none of your teammates go down in the first couple turns, you can probably get four attacks in before it resets your stats, get your terror gauge fully charged, and then start boosting your stats and getting ready for the finale of the raid as soon as he resets you. And it only resets his stats and your stats once each. So once he does, feel free to adjust your attack power or his defenses as you will, and it should be a pretty easy raid. Also, as much as Swampert is a physical attacker by nature, you're probably likely to get more out of light screen or boosting your special defenses here. Because honestly, not only is Muddy Water a special attack, but it hit me more often with Sludge Wave than it did with anything else. Only finally switching over to Earthquake at one point when I boosted my special defense enough. Anyways, I hope that helped out with you planning out any of your own builds. But I understand as not everybody's here for that. So here are my builds for taking on the 7-star Poison Terra Swampert. First up on my list of builds, we have Galarian Articuno. Being a Psychic Flying type, it's immune to Earthquake. And if it does start using Liquidation on you and manage to lower your physical defense, the competitive ability will raise your special attack. Galarian Articuno comes with Reflect. And I know I said Light Screen was more effective here earlier, but in Articuno's case, it's not really worried about the special attacks. Considering that it also has Calm Mind, which is going to be boosting its special defense the entire time. Which means that Swampert's more likely to switch over to its physical attacks, which is why Reflect is nice to have. For its main attack, it comes with its unique attack, Freezing Glare. An incredibly strong psychic move that will do a lot of damage in this case. And just so you don't have to waste all your heal cheers if you need to give yourself a boost, Recover. Next up on the list for another offensive build, we have Bruxish. Its ability Strong Jaw boosts the damage on any biting moves, which it's going to be using. And it comes rocking Light Screen to half the incoming damage of the special moves that are probably going to be used against it. Swords Dance to boost its own attack power. Psychic Fang for its main attack, which is going to be boosted even further by its ability. And Psychic Terrain to give Psychic Attacks a boost for 5 turns. That doesn't just apply to you either, that applies to all your teammates. So not only are you going to be boosting your own damage, you're going to be boosting a lot of your team members as well. Next up on the list, and I hate to throw another Legendary on here, but... Latios. Latios is catchable within Scarlet and Violet in the DLC, so I don't feel too bad about throwing this one in here. Being a Psychic Dragon with Levitate, it is fully resistant to ground and resists water attacks. So more than likely, Swampert's just going to be spamming Sludge Wave, in which case, Light Screen's going to half that. It also comes equipped with Chilling Water to lower Swampert's physical attack, and its unique attack, Luster Purge, to do most of your damage. Now, Luster Purge has a 50% chance to lower the target's special defense whenever it hits. So rather than boosting your attack, you're just going to be spamming this the whole time. And because Luster Purge has limited power points, I also put Psychic on here. For this strategy, you basically just get up Light Screen, and then spam Psychic and Chilling Water until it resets its own stats. Once it resets its stats, go for the Luster Purge until you run out of power points, and then just Psychic to victory afterwards. And considering you're basically doing nothing but attacking, Shell Bell is going to keep you healed up real nice. And for a bit of a support build, we also have Cresselia. Now we did experiment with our other usual support builds, Blissey and Cloyster, but we found that neither of them really stacked up against Swampert defensively. As such, Cresselia turned out to be the star of the show for support, being a psychic type and therefore not actually weak to anything that Swampert's throwing at it, and also having Levitate to make sure that Earthquake can't hit it. It comes rocking both Light Screen and Reflect so it can keep both of those up for the entire team and make sure that no matter what attack Swampert's throwing out, it's only going to do half damage. It also comes rocking Helping Hand and Lunar Blessing to boost your teammates' attacks and to keep them all healed up. Being the best rounded support in this scenario with damage reduction, healing, and damage boosts for your teammates, Cresselia is the star of the show here. But as you know, sometimes it's hard to pull together a team to do a 7-star raid with. Not everybody has friends who are on at any given time to jump on and do a raid together. And online randoms can be absolutely terrible. So if you feel like farming items a little more efficiently, here's my build for soloing the 7-star Swampert raid with... Slowbro. Now, I've talked about this Slowbro build in past at length, but I've changed this one up a little bit just to reflect the differences in what Swampert does. Right at the beginning of the raid, start with a Calm Mind to boost your stats a little bit, and then use Stored Power until your Terra Gauge is fully charged, or it resets your stats, whichever comes first. Once Swampert has gone ahead and reset your stats, you're going to want to use Calm Mind six times. Now, this is going to take you six turns to build up, and that time a lot can happen. So if you start getting low on HP or it manages to voice, you're going to make sure to use a Heal Cheer to keep yourself topped up. Once you've used Calm Mind six times and your special defense and your special attacker at plus six each, you can go ahead and drop Stored Power until it goes down. Now, alternatively, if you want to boost the damage a little more, you can also use Psychic Terrain to boost your damage. And if you want to boost the damage of Stored Power even more, you can even use Iron Defense to raise your defense a little bit and add a little more base power to the move. But in my experimentation, you really don't need to use any of the others. 
And honestly, it's a little more situational if you think it's switched to its physical moves and it's doing a little too much to you. But with all that said and the massive damage coming out from Slowbro, Swampert goes down. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my Terror Raid content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. It really helps me out. And if you ever need help with the 7 Star Raid, I go live on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ixistudios, every Thursday night around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, whenever the raid comes out, where me and my friends will be on clearing the raid and providing builds for anyone who needs them. We also almost always have some extra slots open when we do it, so feel free to drop in. We'll try and get you included. Thank you once again for coming out. I'll see you again in the next video. Peace.